Dear students, we continue where we left off last time. So uh, the exercise I've asked you to do complete was to modify your program, which was converting Fahrenheit to Celsius. And you first, uh, you calculate the formula now by multiplying by five over nine separately. So in parentheses and see what output you get. So now I'm just going to quick shift to dev C++ to show you the outcome you, you are going to get. So I'm just going to uh, share the screen for dev C++. Okay, so that's the program. Uh, initially, when we were looking at the programs, there was a five multiplied by this one, and over nine was on this side. Okay, so if we run the code in this current state, we should get the output we saw on the slide. So let's quickly run that. So I'm just going to share you the output screen now, and you can see uh, this is what we got earlier. Since we are using here integer variables, of course, we're not going to obtain decimal port numbers for your temperatures in Celsius. So it's going to throw away all the uh, decimal points you have, but still you're getting a quite accurate value. Uh, <coughs> rounded, it's not really rounded as we've seen in class, but it's just throwing away all the decimal port numbers. Okay, now next. Uh, uh, Next exercise I asked you to do was uh, try to uh, change the formula. So I'll just do that again in the first to show you. So what I, I was meaning was if we do such a change now, we multiply by a five, five by nine here. So it's basically the same mathematical formula. If you look at this uh, as a formula, it should do exactly the same thing. But if you run your code now, there's a brain program exactly the same. If you run the code now and let me share the screen to you. So what you find now is all your output values are zero. In this case, it seems you've changed a step to, uh, to 30, that's not a problem. But the main point here is we are obtaining an output value of so zero everywhere, so something wrong is happening. So let's try to understand what actually is happening in this code here. So when you uh, when you multiply by, so as you can see here, step has been changed to 30. It was 20 in the original program, but that's not the uh, purpose here. Is understanding why the sessions values are becoming zero. Okay. So if you look at this formula now, we are multiplying by five over nine, and we're using everywhere integer uh, variable types. So the five over nine, we know when take five and nine, you expect it 0 0.555 continuously. So because an integer that is being used now, an integer calculation, so you would round off this five over nine to zero. This is why for every value you put for FHR, you would typically get zero. But if you just make a change like this, if you just uh, take off the uh, parentheses, in this case, it's going to first take the FHR minus 32, multiply by five, then divide by nine. So you don't expect to get this problem. If you just run this code now, it should give you the values we got earlier. So we'll just share the output screen with you. So this is what we're getting now as expected. Okay, so important to understand when you are doing computations with integers, you're typically losing uh, decimal point numbers. Now, a very easy way out of this, if I just shift the lecture slides now. A straightforward way for us, if you're dealing with uh, temperature values, you would typically want to have some better accuracy in your values. You don't want to just throw your decimal point numbers. So in that case, if you move ahead, you would want to use a variable type, which allows you to uh, store more of decimal places. Now, before we do that, in the format specifier, which uh, we have used before, so percentage D, percentage D, as clear we've discussed that, when you use input of this format specifiers for integers, percentage D, percentage D, you're typically displaying the values of variables. Now, when you start adding this uh, length on format specifier, like 3D and 6D, you're saying now on the screen, when you want to display the value of FHR, reserve three placeholders for me. 
skip. In a few minutes, we'll run the code and see what happens. Whereas for Celsius, you're saying reserve six placeholders. So if you typically do that, you would get right justified values. So if we just make uh, this uh, change in our code, So basically, we're saying here uh, we have percentage 3D and percentage 60. So if you do that, again, we are now reserving the amount of spaces that are stored on the screen for displaying these values. Okay, so if you just run this code, uh, you understand straight away what we mean by this uh, reserving placeholders for uh, placeholders on the screen. So I'm just going to share the screen again with you. Uh, now you can see these values here, for example, for FHR, they are all right justified. So this is where you've reserved three placeholders. So you can see for this one, we had reserved three placeholders. So you start on the right, but since there's just one value here, uh, one digit zero is here. The second one was 30, so you have used two of placeholders and so on. Whereas for the uh, value you're getting for your Celsius, you can see six placeholders was reserved. So you have spare places in between. So by reserving placeholders, by in by including uh, the length of the uh, placeholder in your format specifier, you're able to write justify your values and here it's more, much more formatted, uh, better uh, for viewing than having uh, numbers just scattered around the screen. This is one thing you could consider uh, when you are displaying values on the screen is you could use your format specifiers with length, uh, amount of placeholders that you are reserving for that particular uh, variable. Okay, so next thing we've just mentioned is if you wanted to now have more accuracy in your values, you typically would want to keep at least a few decimal places, and this is where you're going to start to consider a new data type, and that's a float. Okay, so if you uh, modify your code as follows here now, you use a float for your FHR and Celsius. Now, of course, your lower, upper, and step, these values are not ready. You could have used a float for these ones as well, but we know our lower is zero, our upper is 300, and step in that case is 20. So you don't have decimal point numbers with them, so that's not a problem here. You can very easily combine your integers with floating point numbers, so the uh, compiler is going to use the more accurate value. So for example, if you take a variable which is of that integer, you multiply it by a variable of that float, it's going to use the result to be float because that's a more accurate value. But on the other hand, since you're going to generate values for FHR and Celsius uh, for computations, so here you will want to use floating point numbers for them. So we've uh, now declared these two variable tabs as float. So FHR is going to float. So just look at this line here. Your FHR is defined as a float. You're equating it to an integer. There's no problem here because it, FHR is a data type with more accuracy, which can have more number of memory space to store the values. So FHR here would typically have decimal point numbers now. Okay, so now when you calculate your Celsius, you can have decimal point numbers now. Okay, that's what we're doing here. So you can see we have written 5.0 divided by 9.0 now to specify that this is actually a floating point division and multiplied by FHR minus 32.0. So the result here would be a floating point number and you're able to uh, get more accuracy in your computations. So to print the values, before we come to this format specifiers here, let's just try to run the code without putting the length and then I'll explain to you what actually the length is doing. Okay, so let's just modify our code now to use the types uh, for FHR and Celsius of floating point numbers, the keyword is float. So I'm just going to share now dev C++ again with you. So what we're saying now is uh, the, we're going to use integer, for integer type variables for lower, upper, and step as before, but for FHR and Celsius, we are using float. Okay, of course you need a semicolon to end any statement. So all this is fine. Just when you're displaying now, before we come to the length uh, specification, your format specifiers, we first uh, test percentage F. So percentage D, was the format specifier you would use for integers, and percentage F is the format specifier you would use for floating point numbers. So if you run a code like this, let's see what you get. Compile, so we don't get any error. And then let's run the code now. I should take a bit of time. Let me just share the screen now with you so that you can uh, see the output screen. Yep, so I hope you can see it. Uh, here there's no format specification here. Uh, it means there's no length in the format specifier. So by default, six decimal place is being used. Okay, you can see six decimal place. 
So your, uh, your FHR value is actually 0, 30, 60, but being of floating point numbers, we have actually six decimal point numbers. And now you can see your computations is much more accurate. You are now having more decimal places. So by default, if you use percentage F, there are six decimal point numbers. This is program you compile. Now, if you want to have a better formatted output, this is where you start using uh, length format specification. Let me see how this works. Let's shift back to your slides and, and explain what you find in your code as shown in the slides. Let's look at this line here. Yep, where you're doing your printf. So percentage F, percentage F is clear because your two variables there, FHR and Celsius, are floating point numbers. So you would you use percentage F. Now, when we saw the uh, length uh, specifications uh, previously in your uh, for, uh, for integers, we just had one number, it was six, three and six before where we were specifying the number placeholder. If for floating point numbers, you have dot and then another number. This is simply saying to us, I want how many decimal point numbers do I want to represent in that number? So the free there is saying reserve free placeholders for the variable FHR. And the point zero is saying, I don't want to display any decimal point numbers. So here, for the first value being displayed, we should not get any decimal point numbers. The second one being displayed now, we're saying a reserve six placeholders, so it's going to be right justified, like you've seen, and you're saying you want to display the numbers with only one decimal point. You could put two here, you could put three, we say by default it's six. Let's just quickly make this change here uh, and see what difference it makes. So I'm going to share in depth C++ with you. So now the first one we're saying, let's put it percentage 3.0F. So this one is saying reserve three decimal places uh, okay uh, reserve three decimal places for your uh for your first variable and then the second variable here we're saying reserve six uh, placeholders but i want to display only one decimal point you could put percentage uh, 6.2 f percentage 6.3 f depending on your requirement now you can ask why you're using uh, point zero here f for fhr but we know fhr is going to be zero in this case 30 let's put it back to 20 what you were using earlier so your fhr is going to be 0 20 40 says there won't be any decimal point numbers with fhr just by the fact that it is actually a floating point number but we don't expect any decimal point numbers because we incremented by 20. on the other hand the celsius value you're calculating based on this formula here is definitely going to have uh, some decimal point numbers and we are saying let's display only one decimal point number. So we'll just modify the code, uh, the short video, show it like this first, and then we'll just modify the, uh, the length for format specification and see what happens. So I'm just going to share the screen now. Output screen, this is what you get. Uh, again, as you've seen earlier, formatted output for the first variable that's no decimal place because we had put percentage 3.0. The second one now, we are having one decimal place and six placeholders are reserved for that. Okay. Now, if you just make a small change of code, for example, if you just, if you just, uh, for example, put percentage 3.2 FEM is now, I want to display two decimal point numbers. Uh, you can just run and see the difference. Let's quickly do that. Okay, I'm just showing up the screen again. So this is what you get now. As expected, you have two decimal places now being displayed and you have six placeholders. So you can see over this one, two, three, four, five, six. So using all your six uh, placeholders that's given in your format specifier and the space that's left in between is actually the space you had between the two uh, format specifiers. I'll just uh, uh, show that to you. Uh, If you look on the format specifier, the space which you have in between is the space you've seen there. So this program here has enabled us now to work with floating point numbers. And what we've learned, uh, first thing is use percentage F as a format specifier to display numbers in printer for floating point numbers. And then if you have to specify now the length, uh, you want to add length from a specified floating point numbers. So here you have two things you have to consider. One is the amount of placeholders, which is of course, what you did for it as well, but here you can also specify the number of decimal point numbers you want to display. 
This is why Sabast format here is a number, then point another number. The point another number is the number of decimal places you want to use. Let's shift back to our slides now and we continue with the uh, with this uh, part of the lecture series. So uh, again, I will encourage you to start coding these things and then testing them yourselves. There are new elements we've introduced here, but all of them are being progressively introduced based on what we covered earlier. So make sure you are keeping in touch and being regular at the programs, understanding the concepts progressively. Okay, so I will invite you to read all this. This is what just explained about using 5.0 over 9.0 for 14 point numbers. Even if you use 5.9, it will still give you the value here because you're operating with a floating point number. Okay. Here we've uh, learned how to use the percentage F for a specifier and also to specify the length and the number of decimal places used. Let's move on now. So uh, next we look at a, pro at, at, a, uh, at a program, a function that's provided as part of the stdio.h library called getchar. Of course, your uh, library, standard library stdio.h is not only one function. You can have many functions that's included in, uh, in the library, it's not only one. Now, the first one is called getchar, which we're looking at. So what does getchar do? You should read that line here. Getchar reads the input character of the text stream and returns its value. So if you want to code like this, C is going to getchar, ended of course by semicolon. The, uh, the uh, program will wait for a character to be input on the screen, and then you can use that in your, uh, in your calculation. Now, the second function, which is count part, is called put char. It's going to print the value that you have uh, from any given character. If you feed that inside the parentheses here, it's going to take this value and put it in the screen. Okay, let's just quickly look at the program, which is using getchar put char. So just to summarize again, getchar allows you to get the character from the user, only one character. It cannot be uh, two characters, it cannot be more than two characters, it can be text, for example, it can be just one character, like letter A, letter B, letter C, so only one character. If you want to input uh, a string or text, then you have to use other uh, variable types, which we'll look at later. This one is just to input one character, and this one just to display one character on the screen. So let's look at this program here. So uh, many things are familiar to you here. We have a header file again, it's a comment, the main program. We are now uh, declaring a variable C of that integer. Okay, don't worry about the EOF for the time being. So we'll come or we'll uh, discuss that in a few minutes. So this code is simply declaring first a variable C and then C is going to get char, is going to, uh, when you get that the function get char, is going to now on the output screen, wait for the user to input the value. When you press enter, that value you have entered, that character you have entered, actually is going to be saved in your C level. Okay, now let's look at this line here. We've studied the while loop already quite at length. So we've seen that before. So we know inside a while loop in the parentheses here, as long as this statement here, which is being evaluated is true, we're going to keep running the while loop. The while loop starts from here and so first step is as long as this uh, evaluation you have of this expression that you have C and so on is true. As long as this is true, the code will keep running. When this becomes false, then the while loop will end and then you come here and then you end your program. So this, uh, this is an opening parenthesis for your main program and this is a closing parenthesis for your main program and it's an opening uh, curly brace for your while loop and it ends here. So as long as this condition is true, it's going to evaluate these two lines. Okay, now let's look a bit in more detail. What is the EOF? So EOF stands for NL file and is an integer defined in stdio.h. So the EOF is a reserve keyword, is defined in your stdio.h library, and it stands for NL file. So it typically demarcates, it typically is used to end a file, a text file. This is what's actually standing at the end of your text file when you press close, when you save in Word, for example. So how this can be created on the keyboard, if you press Control Z, so Control Z on the keyboard, this is creating the, uh, the, the EOF, the end of file character, so only one character. Yep, so it is using programs to open and read text files to know when the file content ends. So for example, if you open a text file and you want to keep reading the file until all the, uh, the input, the content of that file is over, is read completely, 
at the end, you will have end of file character, which is typically invisible. So you can keep reading the file until you reach the end of file uh, character. So this is the purpose of this end of file character. It's defined in your stdio.h again, library file, and it can be created by pressing Control Z on your on your keyboard. So now if you understood, if we come back to this one, so what is EOF here is simply a character. So uh, once this C is going to get char, means you are asking the user to input the value. So once you input the value, let's say at this point here, you input the value that you just annotated. Let's say when, and, and at this point here, when you have C is going to get char on the screen, you input the value of A, the character A, and then you press enter. Okay. So at this point, this A here is stored in C. Okay. Now, next line, when you reach here, then the while loop will be evaluated, the expression inside the while loop will be evaluated. It's saying while the C value is not equal to an of file. Now, since you included, you've uh, input an A here. Now, this uh, symbol you find here, if I draw it a bit big, it's like this. So this means not equal to. not equal if you wanted to check all these equal then you would use two equal to here so there's a difference between something like this with one equal to is called an assignment so whatever you are inputting from your function you are assigning to see then you use only one input when you're assigning a value to a variable if you want to check whether two values are equal then you use two equal to so the outcome of this uh, comparison can be false or true. Similarly, when you're comparing if two, uh, if two uh, variables or two values are the same, when you use this uh, symbol here for comparison, the outcome would be either false or it's true. Okay. So at this point here, let's again come back to our program. So we let's say we've input C, the value of A here inside. So C is going to A at this point. Then we are saying while a is not equal to n of file, definitely. Your uh, value of A is not the n of file. n of file, we say, is when you, when you type control and then Z, you're going to get the n of file character. So you've done that. So it means this is true now. Your A is not equal to this one. So this is this, this when you evaluate the expression here, you get it true. As long as the while loop is true, you will run this too. So when this line is found to be true, it goes inside the while loop and then say put Chelsea. So it's going to display the value of A on the screen. And then again, you have a repetition for get char. So it's going to again run get char and ask the user for a new value that can be input. So let's say at this point, we input the value of B, the second get char. We type enter. So now uh, a value of C is B. So we are checking now, is B not equal to an file? Again, that's true. So it is going to display the value of uh, B on the screen and ask for a new value. So this program is going to keep asking the user for, for many characters until you reach a stage where you press your control C. When you press control C here, when this get charge run, this get charge will not be run many times because it's outside the while loop. It is running once. Whereas whatever you find inside the curly braces here will run repetitively as long as this condition is true. So at one point when you have C is going to get char, let's say now you press Control Z Enter. So now uh, Control Z Enter is going to create an of file, an of file for your value of C. So you're saying is an of file not equal to an of file? But it's false now because an of file is equal to an of file. So when this becomes false here, you don't execute, you don't print the value, you just exit and come out of this, and then you and you program. Yep. So I would encourage you to just write a small piece of code here and try to run it. So basically, I've explained to you what the code does. It's going to uh, request for a crack from the user. And as long as you don't press Control Z, if you press any other value like A, B, C, D, and so on, it's going to keep displaying this value in the screen to you until you actually uh, press Control Z and then you uh, exit. Yep, so let's continue here. This explanation which I've just uh, given to you. Okay, first explanation. So we've just covered this one. Okay, so this is uh, a more concise way you can write the code we've just uh, written. Remember, 
when you wrote this code um, earlier, that C is going to get your work actually, one, C is going to get your work outside the while loop, so that you get a value when you are actually stepping inside the while loop. And then inside the while loop, you had to actually get a, a new value for C, so you had to repeat a get char. If you don't request a new value uh, using get char inside your while loop, then you end up having an infinite loop because you're not updating your value, just like, for the temperature program we had, if your FHR initially is zero and then inside your while loop you don't update the value to 20, 40, and so on, then you have an infinite loop where your FHR is just stuck on a value of C. So again, uh, if I just annotate again, uh, we had a get char here and then a get char here. So this is a more concise way of writing your program here, where when you step inside the while loop, you actually ask the program to get a value for C first. So this one is C is going to get char. Can you see how a parenthesis here and here and this parenthesis here? This is a function called get char. So before you can evaluate C against the end of file character, you are first asking for a new value. So once you get the new value, then you compare. Then if that is condition is true, you put it on the screen and then you go back in the while loop, you request for a new value. This is a more concise, more compact way of writing your code where you don't have to repeat codes here. So as you develop proficiency, you will be able to write codes using more compact form. Uh, I'm not saying this code is wrong, which is perfectly fine, but in the code, in the, in the version you just seen, you are now putting that get char inside your while loop itself, the expression for the while loop evaluation, and there your code becomes more compact. So as you go along, you become proficient in writing this type of concept. Now, uh, another important observation that you find in this part of the construct here is you don't find any curly braces for your while loop. Yes, is, you have a curly brace for your start of your main and end of your main, but the while loop now doesn't have any curly brace. Why so? If you have only one statement that is attached to your while loop, you don't need to put any curly brace. It's a very important observation. When you're writing a piece of code, if you don't have more than one statement which is attached to your while loop, then you don't need to put curly braces. If you look at the earlier version we had, since you here you have one and two statements which are attached to that while loop, you need to put these curly braces. In this program here, if you omit the curly braces, only the put char is going to be attached here, and again, you get an infinite loop because you're not updating the value. So in that case here, these two statements need to be attached to your while loop. This is why we definitely need the curly braces. Whereas in this version, we've just seen where it's more compact here. Since the get char now is inside the expression itself, only this one single statement is attached to while loop, you don't need curly braces. So important observation. Okay, so uh, I'm going to stop this video at this point here, uh, based on what we've discussed there with the get char, put char, and also the format specifiers. I would invite you now to, uh, to continue from here. Uh, to look at, the, at this program here and see what's doing. There are a note given. So from the next video, I'm going to start from here and progress. So you should be able to test these programs here and test the NO5 character, how it's generated, and see if this program is working for you uh, based on what you've discussed. Means inputting characters to the screen, one at a time, say A, enter, B, enter. If you display the values you're entering uh, as long as it's not the NO5 character. So make sure you do test that and Next time onwards, we're going to keep building on this competence of applying the get char, put char, and some further uh, features of a C uh, language. And uh, so you can see the next topic coming up is scanf, which is the counterpart of printf. So scanf allows you now to request because they now we've used get char to get a character only from the screen. But if you wanted to get numbers and you wanted to get, for example, text and strings, we use we need a function which allows us to input things of and characters and that is what is scanf. So we'll cover that in the next video. Thank you very much.